CDL player salaries is something we don't hear that much about. So in today's video, I decided to look around and compile a bunch of different resources to gain some information kind of about, you know, what players could be making the salary cap limits and such like that to share it with you all today. How's everyone doing? Maverick here and welcome back to my channel. Like I said, we're gonna be talking about CDL salaries and contracts in today's video. Just popping in real quick to remind you all to like this video and to subscribe. 98% of my viewers are not subscribed. So shout out to the 2% of you that come back and subscribe and watch these videos. But to the 98% of you that aren't sub that really appreciate the sub and help me grow this channel, really drop a like to help me out in the YouTube algorithm. Let's see if we can get five likes on this video. That might be aiming pretty high, but I definitely think we can do it. So first off, and the thing I, I watched that actually gave me this idea was I watched a clip from the flank with Zuma and Methods talking about this topic topic about player salaries and contracts. I'll leave a link to that down below. You can click that and check it out for yourself to kind of hear firsthand how they were talking about it. But some of the things they said at one point, Methods said there are people making 300K that you would be mind blown are making 300K. So right there, 300 grand for one year is obviously a lot of money to a majority of the population, well more than a majority of the population. And he said that we'd be mind blown as to some of these players that are making this much, which makes you think these players that are making it might not even be superstars or top players. They could just be players with maybe some big brands or these teams really just have that much money to throw out there at these players. Zuma and Methods also said that superstars make about 250k to 400k like the main vets are the ones that make up to $400,000 a year. So I would think it's likely to say, you know, like Crim6, Clayster, Formal, Scump, those guys probably maybe make up to that 400K mark around and are on the higher end. Zuma also said that a majority of the players are a good 200 plus. So if a majority of players are making over 200 grand, that's a lot of money per player that they're spending yearly. But when we look at the CDL website, it does say, and this was for the 2020 season, so I'm not sure if it's changed from the first season to now. Likely it hasn't really changed much since it's only been one year, but it says the base salary is $50,900, and that has to come along with healthcare and retirement benefits. So at the minimum, a CDL player can make $50,900. It also says that each franchise is required to split at least 50% of the prize money with their players. So technically speaking, depending on how each franchise wants to run it, let's say if you look at Atlanta FaZe, who you know pretty much win every major, they have to split at least 50% with the players. So when they win, you know, a hundred, if they win 100 grand, they have to give at least 50 grand to the players. So they actually, the organizations can take a lot of the money from winnings if they choose to. If I had to guess, honestly, I could see a lot of organizations taking up to that 50% mark since it was so expensive to buy into the league and also to play these player contracts. They're pretty much nowhere near making money. Like there's no shot they're profitable. And a lot of these teams probably aren't even bringing in that much revenue. I mean, let alone from winning tournaments, which is definitely not a big revenue source in esports. Um, it's interesting to think about how much these teams actually split with their players. Do they take up to the 50% or do they take even less because they know, you know, their players are the ones that worked for it. And you also got to think coaches and analysts might also get a cut of winnings because they obviously contribute to the team in terms of training them and practicing with them in order to get up to win these events. According to Dexerto in one of their articles about the year one of Call of Duty League back in 2020, they said that the CDL salary cap was $1.575 million. So in one year, a team can sign their players, whether it be, you know, this was back when there was five players starting on a roster. So, you know, five to seven players with some bench guys. Um, they said the CDL salary cap was up to $1.575 million for those, you know, five, six, seven players. So if you do some little math here, just to kind of get a feel for these numbers. You take two bench players on a minimum salary of $50,900, and that gives you $101,800 between those two players. So this comes out to an average of 368,000 left for each of the four starters. Now, obviously there's no way all four starters on a team are probably making 300K each. I doubt any team is doing that. Even the teams like FaZe or Optic, I doubt are paying each player 300, 300 grand per year. And if one superstar makes up to 400K, that right there between the superstar and the one that are in the two bench players comes out to over 500 grand. 
but that still leaves a million dollars for the remainder of your roster, which would possibly be only three players. So it's very likely that most teams didn't even come close to the salary cap of $1.5 million. I mean, a team like Optic or FaZe could have come close, right? Because it's likely, you know, a, a main vet with a big brand like Scump would demand a lot of money. But on the flip side, there's also that thought of like, Scump's been on Optic his whole career pretty much. You know, he probably isn't telling Hector like, hey, you got to give me a big ass salary because like that's, you know, or else I'm not signing. Because we all know Scump probably wasn't going to sign anywhere else. I would assume Scump would uh, go to, into content creation if Optic was like, hey, we're not going to sign you. You'd probably just be like, all right, I'll just stream and make content for Optic full time rather than go play in another team, have to move, you know, all the stuff that goes into that. There's teams like FaZe, you know, that, you know, are full, filled with like four really, really talented players. But before this season, obviously we knew this team was going to be good, but no one knew that they were going to be this good. And I'm sure their salaries weren't increased. Maybe there's winning bonuses and also they get prize money. Um, but, you know, it's likely that none of these teams actually came close to this almost $1.6 million salary cap. I really would like to know, and I think it would be cool if esports was more transparent about their salaries and their contracts. You don't really see too much talk about it in esports. When you look at traditional sports, obviously, and it's you can't really compare the two because traditional sports is different and has also been around for way, way, way longer than esports. But in traditional sports, if LeBron James or Cristiano Ronaldo or any of these athletes on any team in any league, not even just the superstars like I just named signed to a team their contract information is always public you always see like blank signed a four-year 30 million dollar deal you know like all that stuff so I think it would be cool if we could start seeing this in esports. I know most players signed a two year deal uh, at the start of 2020 for the first season. So a lot of players are gonna be free agents going into this next year. Um, I don't know if there's a such thing as restricted or unrestricted free agents in the COD League. Um, we don't really know how most of this works. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how that goes. Um, and I'm interested to see if we can get to that point where we actually learn more about contracts in the future. So I think kind of like to summarize, you're looking at, you know, 250 to 400K for these main veterans. You know, you got some dudes making 300 grand. Um, a lot of the players are making over 200 grand. And with the base salary of nearly $51,000, I would say rookies, um, people, you know, that are sitting on the bench more or less are probably more on that minimum side um, of that $51,000 thousand dollars um but hopefully we start to learn more like i said uh i really want to know more about this and i think it would be good for the industry itself in esports to be more transparent about these things because i think knowing contracts like in big sports is kind of something that fans like and i think that kind of increases that trust and like increases that bond between a fan and the league when you really know the nitty-gritty of details like this when it comes to contracts thank you all so much for watching this video if you did enjoy drop a like and subscribe for more call of duty league content let me know who you think is making the most money in the cdl down in the comments i kind of want to see what people think i would guess most people are going to say scump but i do want to see what everyone says thank you all once again and have a wonderful day